The randomized controlled trial that you and I are about to delve into is quite astounding for a couple different reasons. Number one, we are talking leaky gut intestinal permeability. When you look at the number of elements associated with intestinal permeability from Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, food allergies, so on and so forth, the study that we're about to delve into can yield benefit for just about anyone. Now, what makes it even more remarkable, remarkable is as follows. The benefits that you see here, the increase in the beneficial bacteria, the decrease in the not so beneficial bacteria, and the decrease in zonulin, Zonalin, which is kind of like the supervillain of the intestinal tract, per se, we yielded in eight weeks in individuals with a mean age of 78. So you have to keep in mind to yield these benefits in individuals 78 or older, or I should say mean age of 78. That's fascinating. Also, too, keep an eye on the Faecalibacterium prasinitsi. The Faecalibacterium prasinitsi, you may see a lot of research today in reference to uh, pandemic related issues, especially respiratory tract infections and yielding positive outcomes in reference to certain ailments because that Faecalibacterium prasinitsi is a rising star. And to increase it, or basically double it, I should say, or by 100% in eight weeks in the elderly can yield tremendous benefit and bring an end to a lot of pandemic related issues. But for now, let's get right into the detailed research as follows and let us proceed. Polyphenol rich diets improve leaky gut syndrome in the elderly. The increase of intestinal permeability is associated with factors such as aging, food allergies, and intolerances in unhealthy diets. The alteration causes a reduction of the gut integrity barrier, forgive me on that, that triggers the transit of potentially toxic substances for the blood is related even to the development of chronic diseases such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even Alzheimer's, we reiterate. The analysis of plasmatic and fecal samples showed an increase of the serum metabolome related to the polyphenol intake. For instance, theobromine and methylxanthine derived from cocoa and green tea are positively correlated with butyrate-producing bacteria and inversely, with zonulin, remember the supervillain, a protein related to the intestinal permeability, quoted in the authors. Now let's get right into the full study itself and get into detail of what was consumed and how it was consumed and how long. So it could yield benefit for other individuals. So I'll give us some direction. Here we begin. In the MAPLE trial, quoting, we found that an eight week polyphenol rich diet comprising three daily portions of polyphenol rich foods such as cocoa, green tea, and berries, 1,391 milligrams per kilogram, uh, per, per kilogram, that could be a heck of a lot, 1,391 milligrams, a mere 1,941 milligrams a day of basically the dietary polyphenols versus 812 milligrams a day uh, in the control diet, led to a significant reduction of the intestinal permeability marker, zonalin, in older subjects affected by leaky gut. So you're just talking a mere 1,391 milligrams, or you could say 1.4 grams. I'll probably round up a little bit. Just 1.4 grams of rich polyphenols, or polyphenols per day, three servings of these fruits and vegetable fruits, I should say, your apple, blood orange, green tea, blah, blah. Again, let's proceed. Briefly, the polyphenol-rich dietary pattern was designed by the substitution of some low polyphenol products in the control diet with other comparable products but high in polyphenols. The polyphenol rich products, foods used as snacks or breakfast, while maintaining as much as possible the overall energy and nutrient composition. Specifically, subjects consume three portions a day of the selected polyphenol rich products, including berries and related products, blood orange and juice, pomegranate juice, green tea, renetta apple and puree and dark chocolate, uh, is it Calais or Calettes? And cocoa powder base drink, providing a mean of 724 milligrams a day of total polyphenols is estimated by the Folin Siocaltel analysis. Mean total polyphenol intake was, was again, 1,391 milligrams. Sounds like a lot. 1.4 grams, doesn't sound so much. In the 
polyphenol rich diet versus 812 milligrams a day in the control diet. To conclude, see, it wasn't that difficult. See, can you imagine if they look at this polyphenol rich diet, a basic thing like this, and they incorporate a polyphenol rich diet into, let's say, long term, long term care facilities, nursing homes, anything along those lines, and you get a Bounce, and for example, that Fecalibacterium and Pertinici, uh beneficial bacteria of 100% in eight weeks, you can have a lot of positive outcomes and bring a lot of serious concerns or diminish them greatly, I should say, in reference to certain pandemic mitigation issues. Simple dietary intervention can make a huge difference in health along a myriad of interventions. But I digress, so let us proceed. In short, Changes in lifestyle and food are decisive as a prevention strategy for intestinal permeability associated to aging and chronic diseases. A higher intake of fruits, vegetables, and foods, such as those described in this paper, provide fiber and polyphenols that could help counterbalance the damaging of permeability due to aging, quoting the researcher. So basically, such incredibly, incredibly simple interventions can yield dramatic, profound, health-benefiting outcomes for basically a large myriad, or I should say, swath of the population from everything from Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, metabolism, energy, so on and so forth. Just merely by replacing a few low polyphenol foods with higher polyphenol-rich foods, there wouldn't be so much of a health crisis, or at least not as much or a little less crisis. Simple, simple proactive interventions, not difficult to incorporate, can yield tremendous, tremendous benefit, and most of all, reduce a lot of pain and suffering. Just by adding a little bit more polyphenol rich foods, incredible outcome. Again, gratitude to the researchers, which again present this research to us, it's a randomized control trial, beautifully done, eight weeks, mean age 78, Benefits. And again, I'm humbled watching the channel.